Power Boat Television, North America's premier boating show. Depending on how your boat is equipped and how one uses the systems, especially inverters, monitoring the condition of your house batteries can be quite important. So this week on My Boat, we're going to work with Brian Kelly of Bayland Enterprises to install a precision battery monitoring system. So, Brian, what have we got here? Well, Mike, today we have uh, a battery monitor from Victron Energy, which is uh, essentially a fuel gauge for your battery bank. It's going to give you detailed information. Uh, state of charge and a percentage and it's going to tell you exactly when to recharge your battery bank. Well, let's get started. We chose the electrical panel as the logical location for the monitor, so the panel was opened up and existing wires were tied back for clear access. With the position selected, first a pilot hole was drilled, then a hole saw was used to cut the required mounting hole. Reopening the panel, the monitor gauge was inserted and the locking ring secured. As a professional, Brian is comfortable with a hot panel. However, we strongly recommend that power be turned off before working on any electrical project. Next, the UTP cable, essentially a network data cable, was plugged into the back of the monitor and fed down through the panel housing to the bilge. After the cable was secured with zip ties, the panel was buttoned up and the work moved into the bilge. Brian drew the short straw, so he crawled in to fish the cable from below the panel to where the bank of inverter batteries were below deck, forward in the builds, securing the cable with zip ties along the way. While Brian moved forward by the batteries, I was able to utilize the slack in an existing wire as a fish line. After taping the cable to it, Brian pulled the cable through to the batteries. Well, Brian, we've got the cable in from the panel. What's up next with the install? Well, at this point, we're going to install the key component to uh, this whole process, which is the, uh, the shunt. And this measures the amperage going into the batteries as well as the amperage being discharged from the batteries. It goes in the negative line, and, uh, and let's get it in there. Okay, terrific. At the battery bank, Brian removed the main negative cable, then measured for the length of positive cable that would need to be made up. After selecting the correct gauge of marine grade battery cable and cutting the required length, marine grade terminals were crimped on and the connection protected with heat shrink tubing. Back below, Brian made quick work of connecting the negative cable to the battery bank. Next, the shunt was held in position and mounting holes were marked, then drilled. The holes were filled with silicone and the shunt was mounted with stainless screws. With the shunt in place, the main negative cable was hooked up to it, followed by the negative cable from the battery bank. With the negative side complete, Brian then connected the positive power supply wire with an inline fuse to the B1 terminal. After cleaning up the cable and wire with zip ties, the monitor cable was plugged into the shunt. Finally, the positive supply with inline fuse was connected to the main positive terminal on the battery bank. Well, it's in. We've got voltage indicated here. What's next? Well, next we just uh, go ahead and uh, and program the uh, capacity of the battery bank, the amp hours. Okay. After calculating the capacity of the battery bank, the monitor was programmed and it was ready to go. Beyond voltage, you can also monitor time to go, state of charge, consumed energy, and the current in and out of the battery bank. That wraps up another My Boat project. Really quite straightforward, other than the time it takes with any project where you're running cable through a boat. Brian, thanks very much for your expertise. Thanks a lot, Mike. And I know the owner's really going to appreciate the information that this is going to provide for them. Absolutely.